ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. This is your boy Fly Island Guy. Today we are back here in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. First official trip of the Canada Ops tour. And today we're going to be heading up to Halifax. Still in Nova Scotia. This is going to be a pretty, pretty short trip. Um, it's about 52 minutes. Which is actually longer than I thought it would be. Uh, just to show you kind of what we're doing. Uh, so, our flight plan, there's something wrong with this waypoint uh, here in Navigraph, but pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to leave Yarmouth and we're going to head up uh, north to Digby, and then from Digby we're going to head straight for the airport and we're going to be doing the run runway 14 approach or runway one four approach as you can see here we are all started up and ready to go it is a beautiful morning here in Yarmouth and uh, weather right now uh, in Yarmouth we're looking at uh, the winds out of 110 at 7 knots visibility is off the charts uh, 15 miles clouds broken at 7200 feet um, and as well as 25,000 temperature is one degree C it is very cool so I don't know why uh, I don't know why it's reading 20 degrees C here that's totally off but uh, yeah so that's for Yarmouth we look at Halifax I'm sure the weather's gonna be similar um, looking at MVFR conditions there Funnily enough, you think I could just look out the window. Uh, the wind's out of zero to zero, to zero at three knots. Visibility is 15 miles. Clouds broken 1,500 feet. Broken 2,200 feet. Overcast at 12,000. And uh, the temperature out here is minus two degrees C. If I just break out windy.com real quick. Uh, you will see that um, there's a little bit of precipitation in the area still. It's not much, uh, but and it shouldn't really cause us too much problems. But that's why we're getting our uh, MVFR conditions there. Outside of that, uh, we are pretty much good to go. I'm just gonna get the aux bus on and gonna get our climate control going as usual get on 21 degrees C I'm gonna turn these fans all the way down so there's not too much noise um, I got my pizza heat on and here in Yarmouth we're gonna be departing runway 15 let's see if my map is working today it was not working last time One second here. I never have this stuff up in time. Don't know why. Okay, so runway one five is pretty much straight ahead. Okay. Cool. Uh taxi lights can come on. We are good to go, folks. Also, if you didn't see, one more thing. We are rocking this beautiful red and black livery. Um, you can get that. That's, that's available on flightsim.to and looks absolutely awesome. So I'm going to be rocking this for a while because I just love the way it looks. Very sleek. This is, this is my style right here. You know what I mean? All right, folks, let's go. I already know this weather is off. It's showing, you know, green and and uh, everything is, is looking great and the snow is melted and it's twenty degrees C, but I already know that's gonna that's gonna change. Um, I'm not too sure what's going on there. Why it's 
got this weather right now. I do have live weather turned on, but I'm always positive that's going to change uh, once we get the air, if not now. So this taxiway that we're on right now, apparently, um, aircraft over 50,000 pounds aren't authorized to use it. So I guess that what that's what the X was for. Kind of sucks. I'm going to have to set up my views again inside here. Apparently my views are gone. So let me just do that real quick. Just takes a hot second here. Oh, actually, this is good enough. That's a bad seat. All right. So uh, just be with me for a sec. Make sure these guys are set. Boom, boom, good to go. And then I normally have a second view kind of up front. This is in the cockpit. <laughs> this is on the left, and then I'll do one on the right. All right, views all set. My apologies for that. Uh, we'll get lined up on the runway. I didn't even realize we have our V speeds calculated. What a beautiful sunrise. Okay. RPM level to max. Should have done that already. It's got a high idle. And our trim's already set. Taxi lights. Off. Landing lights on, and everything else should be good to go. All right, folks, let's get out of here. Uh, we're gonna have to do a left turn to get onto the onto the flight path. Tip off power is set. Trying to take off the ground already. Time there goes Yarmouth, folks. the flaps up and I'm going to start that left turn
I mean, this is very accurate <laughs> of how Nova Scotia looks. Uh, once you get out of the city, it's pretty much a lot of trees. It's pretty much all forest. And that is why I absolutely hate driving through like Halifax and New Brunswick and doing road trips. It's really boring. Pretty much staying the same thing the whole way. I haven't started climbing yet. Uh, let's go heading. All right, and uh, let's climb at about 120 knots. I'll get us some some climb rate. Go down a little further. 120 knots, spot on. Then we're gonna set our RPMs to 2,000. All right. Oh shoot! I forgot to turn my generator and my alternator on. Ooh, so much that I forgot. Jeez. I wonder what that noise was. Alright, so that was everything that I forgot to do. I was all messed up. Alright, now we're climbing out. So today our cruising altitude is going to be 13,000 feet. And as I always say, I'm not sure why Stim Brief always gives us that same altitude. I know you're probably saying, well, I mean, you could just not do what Simbrief tells you to do. And that's true. That's true. But I'm also very strict on following, doing, well, following orders and doing what I'm told. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's forget to start the timer. We uh, haven't missed too much of the flight. I just want to see around about how long it takes to get uh, get to where we're going. So as I said, we're heading to Halifax today, which is the capital of Nova Scotia. And if you ask me, it's the best city on the East Coast. None, none of them come even close. Uh, so if you don't, if you don't know about the area, um, we'll bring up Navigraph here, just so you can see. And let's zoom out a little bit. So the Maritimes are basically made up of uh, four different provinces. So we have here uh, Newfoundland, um, which we've been to in the sim before. We have Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, 
right here. PI, which is this little, this little uh, island right here. That's connected by a bridge. So this bridge, I think, is one of the. I think it holds some kind of record for being like the long, like a longest bridge. Somewhere in Canada or something. I don't. I don't. I don't even really know exactly what it is, but it's called the Confederation Bridge. And just to tell you how long this is, I mean, it, when you drive over it, it takes about. I would venture to say about. 10, 10 to 15 minutes to cross this bridge to get to the other side um, at about maybe 80 kilometers an hour so it's a fairly long bridge and also you have the option of um, taking a ferry across which I've done once as well uh, I believe the ferry leaves kind of somewhere here and, and comes across down to pick the ferry is about maybe like half an hour or so but it's a cool little experience if you've never done a ferry before from there you have well the last province which is I, I'd venture to say almost the biggest uh, which is New Brunswick so New Brunswick pretty much I'm trying to figure out exactly where it starts so New Brunswick starts like around here so this area right here is New Brunswick and then it goes all the way out here this is all New Brunswick so it's a pretty large area and uh, right here where Edmonds Edmonston is uh, I just lost it Yeah, Edmonston, New Brunswick here is pretty much on the border of New Brunswick and Quebec. So once you reach here, everything goes French in your GPS. <laughs> and if you're not really like paying attention to it, it's very disconcerting. But even in the Edmonston, they speak, uh, they speak French, which is really weird. So if you don't speak French that well, I would advise you to stop in Edmund Edmondston if you need to pee or if you want to kind of run into a store and grab something and come back out but like don't go there to like order food and all that kind of stuff because um, it's just it's just weird if you don't speak French so that's pretty much that we've hit 10,000 feet uh, landing lights can come off so one of the things I like about Nova Scotia is that I mean this area is so it's so big <laughs> it's such a large area that um, you can there's a lot to explore right I mean I've been here for going on probably 10 years now more than 10 years and you know, I was here before that for six years and I haven't really explored any part of Nova Scotia like that I've been to the north end of Nova Scotia which is Cape Breton or the east north end which is Cape Breton but never been south though and there's a lot of province in between to explore so a lot of people come here if they're nature lovers um, nature lovers big uh, are big tourists here if you like seafood this is a spot to come to as well um, yeah it's very very family friendly cool place you want to come to visit and just chill for a little while like this this isn't the province that you come to to get your party on you know I mean you could do it but you could have a better time elsewhere you know so, but I love it though man I love it I love the whole chill environment the chill scene and even right now just flying over Nova Scotia just makes me feel good 
I wasn't born here, but this place feels more like home than Bermuda ever did. So, got a lot of love for this place, and I don't intend to leave it anytime soon. And, uh, yeah, if you guys were ever to come here, you'd, you'd understand why I feel that way. Anyway, so we're almost uh, about a third of the way through the trip. And we're about to level off at 13,000. So when I come back, uh, we'll be starting our descent into Halifax. Unfortunately, if you were kind of coming from the... the southern side of the airport we'll get to see more of the city but hopefully we kind of get a couple sites in the way in so we'll see how that goes all right outside of that uh this is your boy fly island guy i shall be back i don't know why i said this is your boy fly island guy obviously it's me uh, i'll be back and um we'll be starting out of sense soon all right take care peace Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've started our descent into Halifax. Uh, let's just take a quick look at our approach for today, and from there we'll get all set up for landing because we we should be getting there super soon. All right, so we're going to be in the ILS one four approach. Um, pretty cool thing about Halifax the Airport is the the runway is kind of make a cross so we're heading towards this motor waypoint after which we're going to descend down to we're going to descend to 3,000 feet and then make the right turn to capture the the glide slope so I'll be switching to localizer or to nav 1 uh, once we hit this T-tar waypoint once you get close to the T-tar waypoint so we'll kind of capture the localizer and turn on to final we are fairly close airport should be off in, the, off in the distance somewhere around here and it looks like unfortunately we're not going to get any we're not going to get any uh, views of the city on the way in what I'm gonna do is gonna I'm gonna tune the ILS, which is 109. The localized size 109.1. Let's see what that does. So go ahead and switch that. And once we settle in, we will switch to loc 2 which I think we're good to do now uh, look, look two. here we go In the clouds, looks like we're getting a little bit of ice in here. something wrong <laughs> autopilot just blew past the uh, we just blew past the the turn we should have turned on to uh, should have turned on on to the 
localized. Not sure what happened just now. Uh, one ten out five. Let's try this again. Gonna go into heading mode. So I'm not sure why I didn't capture it just now. The ILS DME is 109.1 IHZ. So let's go there. Trying to get it to intercept. Oh shoot, I know why. I didn't put it in approach mode. My fault. <laughs> okay. Let's do this again. Uh, let me turn. That oh, was absolutely my fault. Sorry. Okay. Settled in. CDI source goes to loc one and approach mode. Now we're good. Sorry about that. So big fluffy clouds. But reading up in the forums, there's a lot of complaints about how there's no major turbulence in clouds, like and if we hit clouds like these, we should be feeling some kind of turbulence. And I do agree. I do agree. Just from recent travels, even when you're in the jets, when you kind of hit these clouds, there's a definite feeling like you're getting jostled around. As soon as you like get into the clouds. So it simulates it a little bit. But not overly though. Like right now we're getting a little bit of bumps, but not much though. And we should be turning onto the localizer very very soon so see the weather right now here in Halifax looking at uh, MVFR conditions still hasn't really changed much from before here we go localizer is captured now uh, winds out of 0704 knots visibility is still 15 miles clouds broken at 1,000 1, feet overcast 2400 temperature is minus 2 we are deep in the clouds now Now you guys have seen me approach in Halifax a number of times, I've done a bunch of flights here. Alright, gonna start getting set up for landing. 
Uh, cause we are about to. Well, actually, we're established on the glide slope now. Just feels like just feels like home, man. Tell you. All right, once we get to that last waypoint, Imado, um, we'll go uh, max RPMs, uh, make sure our fuel condition is set to high idle, which it already is, and we'll go full flaps. So I have a treat for you guys because I installed a third party scenery there. So Halifax is going to look a lot different, it's going to look a lot better. Seeing the runway lights ahead. This is why we're in MVFR conditions right now. Things are a little, getting a little hazy. We're at 1,500 feet. Yeah, it looks like the ceiling's at about 1,000 feet right now. All right, runway is in front of us. So let's get our landing checklist on the way. RPM set to maximum. Fuel condition level is set to high idle. Uh, taxi lights are, sorry, landing lights are on. And I believe that is it. Landing checklist is complete, we're good to go. Go flaps full. Starting to lose some frames here now. So this is pretty accurate. Like we we have had a good amount of snow in the area over the past few days so this is how it will look on the way in actually my frame rates have dropped dude it's feeling kind of jittery Alright, so the scenery has been installed. Uh, this is the terminal off to our right. There's a hotel right at the airport. It's the old hotel. See it right there. So once we land, we're just going to do a tour around the airport and then uh, go ahead and park. I'll take control. 500.
just gonna keep an eye on our glide slope. Let's keep it in the center, keep it simple. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Halifax. That was not the smoothest of landings. And I believe we just missed a turn off right there. This is the other runway. Looks like someone's coming in to land as well. Let's see if there's a turn off that we could use somewhere here. Alright, should be one coming up on our right soon. Having a very hard time seeing the, the markings. Alright, let's get our flaps up. And I'm just gonna go to low idle. I'm gonna try not to shut the try not to shut the engines down like I always do. Good enough for me. Uh, landing lights will come off. Taxi lights on. Um, our strobes have been off all this time. Don't know why. Didn't see that though. All right, so let's head over to the terminal. I can tell you guys right now, this airport is extremely accurate. Just, with, just wish the weather was better. Uh, it's going to take a quick look to the left because I remember seeing an aircraft. I don't know if it's still there. I don't think it is. So we're just going to cross the runway. And this, folks, is Halifax International Airport. So there's some, like... Cargo hangers and stuff down this end. This Air Canada hangar here is there for sure. So 
all of this is very accurate. This is exactly what the airport looks like. Exactly. Halifax Stanfield International. Where's the planes and the gates were actually like connected up? So this isn't a very big airport to be honest. Um, yeah, it's, it's really small actually, but probably one of the bigger ones you'll see in the Maritimes. Here's the Air Canada Jazz Hangar over here. So let's use one of these small gates here, the, the smaller planes, and we'll just park and call it a day. All right. Oh, shoot. I just wonder why my tax lights are flashing. All right, we can come off. Engine off time log. Flight is finished. It has been monitored by on air. Cool. So that is it, folks. We are here in Halifax. Man, it's so it's awesome to <laughs> to see this place. Like just recreated. Let's see if we can go inside the terminal building. So the only weird thing is the gates don't have any doors that are leading out. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if this place is familiar. Yeah, it looks like the inside, the inside is a Model 2L. Yeah, the inside is a model too, but it looks like they were just kind of putting some storefronts inside here. Or pictures of storefronts. Because this Tim Hortons here is actually by an escalator when you come up. So, yeah. Not too, too accurate on the inside, unfortunately. But, uh, outside of that, man, this looks amazing. Let's take a quick look outside. see down here yeah this is pretty close it's pretty close um yeah no this is this is that's pretty good so these back here are your departure halls um these are for canadian like domestic flights and then if you look up further, you see it's showing the US. So the US flights are kind of, you go inside here. Uh, let's see if it's, a, it's actually showing it. 
Oh, that's disappointing. That is disappointing. Yeah, so... The interior is kind of meh. <laughs> but... Yeah, the, ex the exterior here, they nailed it. You can walk across. This is the arrival section. You can walk across here. You come up inside here. There's normally some... Um, on a machine so you can pay for parking and then you have the parking area inside here so this is like a hundred percent it's not a hundred percent detailed but I mean it's got like the kind of main the main points of interest this old hotel is modeled absolutely correctly and they've captured the fact that there's like a downstairs area where you can drive through if you just want to kind of pick up people and leave and this upstairs area as well. So I'd say in terms of modeling the airport, I'll give it like a, a solid uh, 7 out of 10. I think they left out some details, but that's probably so that they can make the, the airport a little smaller. But outside of that, it was awesome, man. It's really, really good. I even noticed here that they have the de-ice bays, which is a nice touch as well. You see here's a WestJet 737 here on the de-ice truck. So yeah, that's a nice touch. It's a nice touch. Anyways, folks, back to the plane. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the flight. The, can the Canadian tour will continue, and I will catch you guys on the next one. This is your, your boy Flyland guy staying, saying stay safe, and most importantly, stay fly. I'm out. Peace.